I want to change lives. I want to show people how to progress in their money. I want to show people how to progress in their mindset. I want to show people how to progress in their brand so that way they can take care of their family, take care of their finances, and experience freedom. Today, I have the, not only, I have the Lotus Roche Ignites coaching on the Progression Show. And I'm truly excited to be able to bring a phenomenal, strong woman who is literally revolutionizing the world with her coaching experiences and her speaking. Welcome to the show, Lotus Roche. Thank you so much, Andy. It's great to see you. I had a fabulous time this past weekend at the summit. It was magnificent. You hit more than a home run. I don't know what, what, what is beyond the home run, and I used to play softball, but whatever is beyond that home run, you made it happen. So thank you so much. Really excited. And I'm grateful that you decided to show up at the Brand Marketing Summit here in Los Angeles, which was a multi-day seminar training that I held for brands to expand their marketing and to get in front of more people and, and to create mass awareness marketing. Lotus, so let's, let's bring it back to before you started speaking, before you started presenting, sharing strategies and techniques. Let's bring it back to before you became the coach and the speaker. You know, I was, I was actually shocked one day. We did an interview, you and I, and you shared it with that you were in the military. And I said, man, I, did, I had no idea. So if you could share with me your, your background before becoming successful as a coach. Well, as you know, I was in the military for a number of years, eight to be exact, four active, five reserve, four reserve, pardon me. And it was a, a wonderful experience as a 19-year-old going into the armed forces and being tasked with being an electrician, graduating as one of the people that was top of my class after failing for a while because my mother had been ill and I got news of it. So my grades had dropped really low. But then once my mom talked to me, she was like, look, you get it together and do what you got to do. So I ended up graduating higher in my class than I had even imagined I would able be able to do. And at that time, I was teaching captains and, and uh, just high ranking officers that would come on board in the realm of electrical safety. So early on in life, I had a lot of responsibility in the armed forces. And then I was a engineer for Kodak, which is one of the largest companies in, in the world. And again, it challenged me in my early 20s to just step up. And I tell you, time after time, I've always been in a leadership position. And for the past several years, traveling abroad and living abroad, it kind of pushed me more into a speaker um, and coach realm, which was always in my forefront. This is what I wanted to do. And so once I came back to the United States, I really took the bull by the horns and started my own company and just began speaking and talking. And for so many years, I think I shared this with you, Andy, so many people would say, Lotus, why don't you come and speak at our church? Or why don't you come and speak here or there? And I would say to them, well, no, I'm, work I'm working on my, 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 um, bachelor's degree. And then once I finished the bachelor's degree and started working on the master's degree, it was, no, I need to finish my master's degree. But the fact of the matter, Andy, was that I was just afraid. And we talk about this sometimes, you know, fear. Um, Les Brown talks about fear as being false evidence appearing real. And I was stuck to that false evidence appearing real until I just decided, you know what, not only can I do this, this is my purpose in life. So once I found my purpose, I started running with it. And uh, it's been it's been phenomenal since I've been since I've been doing it. Yeah. And then I, and then eventually I met you. So now bring, bring to me what's the reason what's the reasoning behind wanting to go into coaching and supporting other entrepreneurs and coaches? Primarily, um, I, I lost a couple of co-workers who were friends many years ago. Um, they actually suicided. And before the, one of them, in, in fact, before he suicided, we was out on the dock and we were talking and he talked about how much he loved his wife and his children. But unfortunately, his wife was having an affair and he had found out. And so that weekend he went home and he suicided. And then my boss, he, he had been electrocuted and he suicided. And his wife she used to always send me cake. Now, I had never met this lady a day in my life, but she would always send me cake in his lunch. And she had found out that she had a terminal illness and she also suicided. And when you're in your 20s and you have this much trauma, 
it begs the question, you know, did I miss the message? And only when once I went to Japan pursuing my, my goal, uh, because I was a coach before I left, I worked for a, a coaching agency and account, a counseling agency, if you will. And I counseled and I coached people because of course I have a degree in psychology and a master's in business. But it was only when I went to Japan did it really set in that, you know, God has been calling you all, your whole life to coach and guide people. But in Japan, I really met, the rubber met the road. Mm -hmm. I couldn't yeah. walk for a while. I was, on, I was on a cane and they didn't know what was going on with me. And I asked God, I said, why? Why is this going on? So one of uh, my friends from one of the ships, he contacted me and told me about a young lady off of his ship that was having suicidal ideations and he asked me to help her and of course I tried to tell him no send her to somebody else but he was forceful with it and so I, I agreed to go ahead and talk with her and the fact of the matter is she had the suicidal ideations or so he and I both thought or at least that's what he conveyed but really what he didn't know is that I was at such a dark place in my own life and it's her call and and also uh, friendship from uh, Angela Elting, who was a suicide interventionist, because I was a trained, certified suicide interventionist at the time. I was also trained to train trainers on um, first aid, CPR, and things like that. But guess what? I needed the CPR. I needed the suicide intervention because it was some dark days when you can't walk and you have to have somebody to wipe your butt or drive you where you need to go. It's very daunting. Is that, is that, did that, did that come from uh, repercussions of being in the military that someone would have to go through that where you would have to wipe your butt or depression was so, uh, and so strong over someone that they got to that point? Yeah, it was so strong. It was just so strong. You know, when you can't, when you're a caregiver and, and you are coaching and you're leading people on and you are not able to do it, it is so earth shaking. And I got to tell you, it's only then that I was able to identify with some of the other soldiers and sailors, because now when I'm in Japan, I'm working for the Department of Defense. I'm not in the military anymore, but my clients, my patients are people who are in the military. And some of them have had horrific accidents or have seen explosions. And I had never been in that position where they were. And I'm telling you, it was an eye opener. I could finally identify with them from the experience, not just from being a clinician. And then when I came back to the United States after I was able to walk, um, and like I said, back then I couldn't understand why. God blessed me to work at a place called the Shepherd's Center. It's a place in Atlanta, Georgia, where people go where they have spinal injuries and oftentimes Many times they're told that they're never going to walk again, but the Shepherd Center does a spectacular job with them to help them reinvent themselves so that they can walk again. And it was for that purpose, wow. that, wow. purpose that I went through all the strains and pains that I went through. That is why I couldn't walk because I had to have a story to tell when I came back to the United States and I was able to identify with these young men and young women who were in wheelchairs and were told they were never going to walk in my story that i shared with them yeah back to the united states and is that when lotus roche uh ignites coaching starts yes that's when it starts really because i got a kick in the pants from a guy named bruce and another gentleman who uh pushed me and my family members pushed me and said yeah just start your own business don't keep working for these places. And of course, I wasn't making my worth, but I loved what I was doing. And because God sent me there, it opened the door for me to start my business. And Bruce told me, he said, Lotus, if people are going to know what you do and who you are, you got to get out there. And it was the people that were in the wheelchairs that challenged me that came up and they wanted to talk to me and they wanted me to tell them my story. And the story I shared with them was the Norman Cousins story. And some of you may know Norman Cousins, they call him the miracle man. He wasn't expected to live, but he lived. And because he chose mind over matter, he walked out of the hospital on the day that he said he would. 
And that's the story that I shared with a couple of young people who were told they were gonna have some significant challenges or who were told you're never gonna walk again. Not only from my story did they walk, many of them are running today. And it taught me that when we have a purpose, and we are called to our purpose, when we begin to walk in it, it's not only our own lives that we save, but it's the masses of people, the hundreds, the thousands, the millions of people that we save through our message. But it's all about walking in your purpose. And that is what ignited me. And that's why I utilize the term ignite and take flight. Love it. So now, what, has, what have you been up to since you left, since you left the military? as far as your coaching business and speaking. Okay, so, so since I've been out of the military and I've been out of the military a, a number of years, I, like I said, I worked for Kodak. I was a clinical engineer for Kodak. I, I worked at the hospitals. I actually was over various territories in Greenville, South Carolina and Augusta, Georgia. And I taught the doctors and the technicians how to run the blood chemistries on the analyzers. After doing that, Kodak went through um, some downsizing, and, and I was one of the people that they downsized. And so I went into construction because, like I told you, I had a background in uh, electricity. I was an electrician in the military. And so I did that for a short time, and then I went back to college, got my psychology degree, and I worked like two and three jobs because I, I owned a house. I owned my first house at 25. So the, the, the loan officers for your mortgage company, they don't want to hear about um, recessions or anything like that. They want you to pay your mortgage. And so I worked really, really hard during the day. And then I went to school at night to get my degree. And then lo and behold, I got a job for University of Phoenix. And then I used to run the university at night, um, working with a lot of the professors who taught there. I was over the security who, who was there. And I love that. But I was working on my passion in psychology. And once I got that degree, then I transitioned from there and I moved into working in the more clinical field where I worked for a practice where we provided counseling. The actual coaching come into play. The coaching, actually the coaching has always been in, in play because when I worked for University of Phoenix, when I was in the military, I was always coaching and training people. I was training officers in the military at age 19, but it really didn't take root where I started my own business totally solely for myself until, until last year when wow. I really uh, exploded, I, I would say. I think 2017 is when I started the business, but last year when I actually got laid off from my job because they downsized, that's when really it took off because then I had the time. When you're working for someone else, making their dream come through, making millions for them, you don't have the time to make your dream come true. Right, right, right. right. So now what's the goal with the, with the organization, with the coaching organization? So with my organization, what I'm doing right now is I'm coaching and mentoring both businesses and individuals. One, I help businesses because I'm certified in the DISC assessment. And the DISC assessment is something that oftentimes individuals and businesses use to delineate the behaviors of their employees. A lot of times companies have a lot of high turnover and that's when they would use a person such as myself to come in, sit down and give their leaders the DISC assessment so they can better assess who is a perfect fit where and maybe if they're working in teams, who is a perfect fit for whom. The second thing that I'm doing is I'm speaking on the progression conference uh, and, and also I'm going to Africa in September. I'll be in, I'll be speaking in Japan in April. I'm speaking all over the globe, helping people to ignite and take flight by understanding how to empower themselves by the way they think. As you know, many people have this negative narrative running in their brain. And so what I help them to do is change the way that they think, because when they change what they think about, what they think about changes. And it brings them back into a balance so that they can live their life more fluidly and it can help them to move into their purpose. And a lot of people wow. don't live their purpose because they're fearful. When someone goes through <laughs> training and someone goes through, what is their to what is the client going to expect or even for the people who 
don't know who you are and are interested in potentially working with you, what are they to expect when doing business with you and going through your training? Okay, so first things first, when people are coming to do business with me, typically I will have a consultation with them and the consultation is usually free without charge because I'd like to get to know how dedicated they are to themselves because I don't want them to waste my time and I'm not going to waste their time. So initial consultation is free. Once the initial consultation is done, then I bring them into my office or if they're overseas because I have several overseas clients, we do an assessment over the phone like very much like we're doing um the consultation now this is how it would seem okay so then i would go over with them i would take an assessment of them i would talk to them about their past because a lot of problems that people have today it's not because of where they are today it's because of where they've been it's because of their past so we look at their past and see what things have caused them to be fearful, what has caused them procrastination, and what has caused them not to move into their purpose. And once we delineate that, I come up with a progress plan, and it's all written up, and they see it, and I go over it. And then if we're on, on um, the web like this, I share my screen with them, and we go through their progress plan together. Because one of my primary things that I, that I help people understand is that this is a journey. When you're healing, when you're overcoming, when you're finding what your purpose is, this is a journey. And I walk that journey with them. People don't want to be controlled. And people don't want people to act like, oh, I'm the coach or I'm the therapist. So you need to do what I say. No, it's a partnership. So that's what I do. I partner with people to help them overcome their limitations, to help them conquer the false evidence appearing real, which is fear, and to help them move into their purpose, to take action, not yesterday, because they can't do anything about yesterday, but take action now. From the very first time they call me and they say, hey, I want to make a difference, that with that's when the action starts. So when they move into that action. You know, who's the type of person that's probably looking for you right now and they may not even know it? Who's that, who's that type of person? The person that's looking for me is a person that has been through trauma, whether it's sexual trauma, physical trauma, or even illness, which causes trauma. Because oftentimes when we go through illness, there's a level of trauma that we need to overcome, like I went through. I went through illness and that was a traumatic situation for me, but I was able to overcome it because I changed the way I thought. And that helped me to help others change the way that they think. The other person that's looking for me is a person that's having problems at work because they don't understand what a D personality or I or S or C personality is, but they want to do the very best they can do at their job, but they don't really understand one themselves or how to mesh within the flow of work. Another person that's looking for me is the employer, the employer or the company owner that wants to upshore their business by understanding how people's behavior will affect your bottom line. Because people's behaviors, you cannot delineate it in a 30 minute interview or in a 45 minute interview while, while they're interviewing for a job or a position within your organization. Because typically people show up and with my background in psychology, I've learned to understand behaviors, but being a certified trained disc assessment trainer, I train trainers. I have learned to understand behaviors. I have learned to be able to convey those behaviors. And what I do is I go over the assessment with the, the company owner and or their top brass so that they can understand, so that they can change the way that they deal with employees. The other person that's looking for me is the person that just needs to make change and don't know how. And that can be anyone on the planet Earth. In fact, it is anyone on the planet Earth. Anyone on the planet Earth that's looking to make successful change by changing the narrative, that broken record that you hear playing over and over in your mind, telling you that your, your family didn't love you because you're adopted, or telling you that that person didn't want you because your relationship failed, or someone telling you, I don't need you anymore at my job because we're having a downsizing and you're a part of the cut. So anybody on this planet 
that needs that type of help and needs that type of guidance and wants to join on their journey in a partnership to help them get to where they're going and to help them sustain where they're going, to be able to ignite and take flight. Those are the folks that's looking for me. And those are the folks that I'm looking to work with. Man, that is so powerful and exciting and, and invigorating to, to, to be able to narrow down the people. And if you're that person that's in the, in the, in the process and you're in your own journey and you're looking to have a coach, how can people reach out to you, Lotus? The best way to reach out to me is oftentimes you can reach me at www.lotusrecheignites.com. That's my website. You can also reach me on Facebook. I'm on Facebook several times a week. You can message me. You can also reach me on YouTube, Instagram, many of my platforms. I'm up sharing them so you'll have a more easy way to reach me. And I'm working on some processes to uh, leverage that. Another way you can reach me is you can give me a call and I'm going to give you my number right here. You can take my 1-800 number and you could call me there. Uh, let me give you this right here. You can also reach me at lotusrecheignites.com. You can reach me at lotusreche at yahoo.com. You can reach me there. And then I'm going to give you this right here. Um, let's see here. While you're going, uh, I just want to acknowledge Lotus. She's one of the most powerful women. You know, one of the things that I've decided to do in 2020 is work with more powerful leaders, thought, thought leaders, and that are women, because I realized that 2020 is the year of the woman. And I was looking for some thought leaders and that I can work with on the Progression Conference National Tour. And Lotus and I partnered up this year. Uh, we met for the first time this weekend at Just Path. And I'm excited to be doing many events with her throughout the remainder of 2020. And the reason I decided to work with powerful women like Lotus is because I recognize that in the audience, in the rooms, that there are a, a plethora of people who need that guidance and support and leadership. And there, was, there were areas that I couldn't fulfill uh, as a, just, just for the simple fact that I'm a man. There's some things that I just don't understand as a man. And myself as an overall or ultimate leader, I have to put the right people into position. And I, work, I decided to work with Lotus and Lotus decided to work, work with me. And we partnered up and growing the business, growing both of our businesses together simultaneously as well as, uh, as, well as uh, doing the same seminars uh, throughout the remainder of uh, 2020. Yes. And this is how you can catch me. Most people typically I am me, but if you need to call me direct, you can call me direct and I'll get your message. If I'm tied up, I will definitely call you back. You can reach me. It's a 1-800 number. It's 1-800-593-9733. 1-800-593-9733. You can call me and I'll be delighted to, to get back with you immediately. But the best way to catch me, just instant message me or send me an email. Hey, Lotus, thank you so much for the opportunity and, and, and taking the time out of your day to give us some value about who you are, where you've been and where you're going. I'm so excited. Now, uh, before we head off, what can the audience expect from you at the Progression Conference when you're speaking at the Progression Conference? What can, what can we expect? Like, what fire are you going to bring us at the <laughs> Well, you already know, Andy. It is going to be an explosive time during the Progression Conference. And listen, let me tell you, you can expect to be ignited because I want you to ignite and take flight, but you can't do that unless I bring the fire. So I'm gonna bring the fire for you so you can dive deep into any situations that are affecting you, that you are trying to overcome. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna have some explosions going on inside of you because we're gonna be bringing the fire to ignite you so that you can ignite and take flight. It's gonna be full of energy. We're gonna have fun. We're going to learn a lot, but most importantly, we're gonna to work together to help you walk your journey successfully. Man, thank you so much, Lotus, for the opportunity of sharing who you are, where you've been and where you're going. I look forward to seeing you. And once again, in person at the Progression Conference and you, Yes, you. If you're listening in and watching, be sure to take part of the Progression Conference National Tour where Lotus and I will be speaking, sharing value on how you can scale your business, systematize your business, market your business, 
and take your life to the next level so you can experience financial freedom and success for the people who depend on you. Much love and thank you for listening to The Progression Show. Bye now. Yes.